Good evening. You're watching the News at 6 with me, Ishan Russell. The News at 6 is all about the day's biggest developing stories and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. The intercession of Parliament to start from the 26th of November. More, many important reform legislations like the GST bill, the land bill and others are slated to come up in this very session. The BJP's parliamentary board meets in New Delhi to take stock of the situation in Bihar, party to debate reasons for the shock defeat. Markets react to the election results of Bihar after falling nearly 600 points during the day. The Sensex trims most of its losses to end the day 144 points down. And the ruling party concedes defeat in Myanmar. Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy all set to sweep far after winning all 12 seats declared so far. The top story this evening, the winter session of parliament will start from the 26th of November. The session will happen in the backdrop of the BGP's massive defeat in Bihar just yesterday. The government is hoping that the opposition doesn't use the verdict to paralyze the functioning of the house. The cabinet committee of parliamentary affairs met on Monday to decide dates for the winter session. Parliament will convene with a special two-day sitting on 26th and 27th November to discuss the constitution and Dr. B.R. Ambedkar's contribution to the nation. To commemorate the accept acceptance of the constitution through constitutional as constitute assembly, we have decided that a special sittings of both the houses are separately on 26th and 27th. First two days there won't be any question hour. And then the winter session continues up to 23rd of December, depending on, depending on the experiences of the government. The government is also expected to make all-out efforts to reach out to the opposition for passage of key bills like the GST. It also urged parties not to interpret the election results as a mandate to disrupt parliament. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaya Naidu said all parties need to enable parliament to pass the reform measures. We are ready to the clear statement of their aspirations. You should not be interpreted as a mandate to obstruct parliament. Opposition parties, including the Congress and the left, have spelt out their own agendas during the session. We, the CPIM, in a special resolution in our party of Congress, have demanded a special stand-alone session to mark um, Baba Sahib Ambedkar's uh, 125th birthday anniversary and that session should discuss the current status of the implementation of the slogan for social justice, what we have done with uh, <coughs> the reservations, how effective, what is the current condition of the social justice for the Dalits, Adivasis, the marginalized sections, etc. But the government has not either circulated an agenda or even informed what it's going to discuss these two days. Let us see how which are the bills and how they are going to affect the common people, workers. We'll see. We'll examine all those things and we'll call a party meeting. In the party meeting, we'll decide which, are, which should be our priorities. The winter session comes in the backdrop of the Bihar election results that have been a huge setback for the ruling BJP-led NDA at the center. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now following the debacle in the Bihar Assembly polls, the BGP's parliamentary board met at the party headquarters in New Delhi today. The meet of the highest decision-making body of the party was convened to introspect to the election results and to assess the reasons behind the party's massive defeat. The loss in Bihar is the most significant setback for the BGP, particularly Prime Minister Modi. In the last Lok Sabha elections, uh, the Prime BGP had swept 31 out of the 40 seats in Bihar, but a little over a year later, the party failed to retain its support base in the state. The BGP President Amit Shah today met RSS Chief Mohan Bhagwat to discuss the poll outcome of Bihar. According to the reports, Shah cited the party's inability to present a credible backward leader as the reason behind such a massive defeat. But no matter what the reasons the defeat has provoked, concerns over the government's economic agenda, a concern that the markets also reflected today. 
What will the NDA's massive defeat in the Bihar Assembly elections meet for the government's economic agenda? The BJP started the year with a huge electoral loss in Delhi. It's ending 2015 with another equally crushing defeat in Bihar. Uh, there will be issues on the agenda, reforms, economic reform. We are talking of GST, we are talking of other FDI issues. All those issues will take a back seat in my view. I feel will not have any impact on centre other than that for one week or two, people will feel low, business will feel low and then they will forget about it. Life must continue. Among the bills that are stuck in the Rajya Sabha is the Constitutional Amendment Bill to implement the common goods and service tax regime across the country. Lok Sabha cleared the bill last year. Former Finance Minister P. Chidambaram accuses the BJP of arbitrarily opposing the GST during the UPA regime. On the other hand, he claims his party's opposition to the GST is based on a specific objection. On the other hand, the loss could even nudge the government to take a reconciliatory approach towards the opposition. In fact, last week, Congress leader Digvijay Singh had asked the BJP government to open discussions on passing these economic bills in the winter session. Krishnanand Tripathi's report for Rajya Sabha Television. And the markets recovered today after falling by as much as 600 points earlier. The BJP's massive loss in Bihar Assembly polls on Sunday triggered a huge sell-off during early trade. Experts say that the markets were disappointed with the BJP's loss, which could eventually impact the reform push by the centre. BJP's Bihar loss clouded the markets as well on Monday. The Sensex and Nifty fell sharply, reacting to the loss of the party in the state elections. The Sensex fell by nearly 600 points in early trade, spreading panic of yet another huge sell-off. The Nifty also fell below the 7,800 mark. The Rupee also fell sharply by over 70 paise to hit 66.50 in morning trade. main reason Bihar Chunao ka jo natije aay, usni market ko umid nidhi ke itne khara baayenge. Lag raha tha, tough competition hai, cut to cut hai. लेकिन एनडीए बहुत बुरी तरह से हारा ये इलेक्शन उसका हम आज मार्केट पे असर दिखाई दे रहा है द बीजेपीज डिफीट इन बिहार हैज आल्सो रेज्ड वरीज अबाउट द मोदी गवर्नमेंट्स एबिलिटी टू पास की रिफॉर्म्स लाइक द जीएसटी बिल गिवन द रूलिंग कोलिशन लैक्स अ मेजॉरिटी इन द राज्य सभा डिसअपॉइंटमेंट ओवर द पेस ऑफ रिफॉर्म्स हैज अफेक्टेड द मोमेंटम इन द शेयर मार्केट्स व्हिच आर डाउन अबाउट 14% सिंस हिटिंग अ रिकॉर्ड हाई इन मार्च and the markets were living in a hope that they would perform well and uh, BJP would have numbers in Rajya Sabha which numbers could have pushed, uh, helped BJP push through all the bills like land bill, GST bills and other bills which were in the pipeline. Now uh, what the markets I think uh, perhaps they think is that now perhaps BJP it would be difficult for, get, uh, to, for them to get through with some crucial legislations in the Rajya Sabha. However, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley sought to delink the poll outcome with economic reforms. He said pace of reforms will remain unaffected, providing much needed support to market sentiments. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. And of course, the ramifications of uh, this Bihar Assembly elections are certainly being felt across the board as far as are the economy is concerned. Uh, it's not really the economy, but the stock markets, at least for now. How this will have an impact on the economy, we'll have to wait and see because the reform process that the government has been talking about sometime, the winter session of parliament is coming uh, uh, up. And now the government has announced the dates for that. And uh, so uh, really, the government in it is as to how to take this forward. Uh, the opposition, of course, sensing the opportunity and presenting a united front. In fact, the BJP parliamentary uh, board met today. You can see these visuals on the screen. And uh, it was uh, the BJP's chance uh, to really have a relook at their entire poll strategy. Remember, this is a completely exhaustive election where uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP President Amit Shah themselves uh, were the main star campaigners for the party. Uh, they addressed um, a huge amount of rallies unprecedented for a, a Prime Minister. 
But uh, in the end, uh, the results are showing a completely different picture and uh, the BJP really grappling with a lot of questions now. And let's go across to our correspondent, Sham Sundar, who's been tracking all the, these developments for us. Sham, as far as uh, the government goes now, uh, its reform agenda is the buzzword after that electoral loss in Bihar. That's what the markets also fear and that's why we saw a tank in them today. But uh, as far as the government's reform agenda itself is concerned, is it on track? Well, uh, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, he addressed the press conference after a parliamentary board meeting and uh, when this question was asked to him, uh, he said uh, that he is quite confident, especially on the bill like GST, he said that uh, opposition will understand the importance of this bill and uh, especially this bill will be uh, uh, very, very important for states like Bihar. Uh, but he also knows that uh, opposition is uh, united uh, at this point of time and uh, winter session uh, will be very, very difficult uh, uh, for the BJP government at the center and he knows that especially in his house uh, in Rajya Sabha uh, uh, government is in, in minority and he indicated also that uh, uh, legislative business uh, needs number and uh, uh, government don't have the number in the Rajya Sabha so after uh, uh, Bihar elections of course opposition will be very aggressive and especially uh, uh, after this campaign of uh, intolerance as uh, uh, Congress party is supporting and uh, other left parties also would uh, uh, raise these, these, this right. issue and after uh, Bihar uh, Assembly uh, uh, election results, uh, 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 the, their voice will be more uh, uh, strong uh, in the parliament. All right, but as far as the reasons for the loss, now there was a meeting between the BJP chief uh, uh, Amit Shah and RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat and uh, the fact that uh, there are a couple of BJP leaders who pointed the finger at Mohan Bhagwat saying his comments and reservation was the reason behind the loss. As far as the reasons for the loss, what is the BJP saying right now just after this parliamentary board is met? Well, as far as uh, Mohan Bhagwat's uh, statement on reservation is concerned or uh, statements uh, made by uh, uh, other uh, BJP leaders uh, which were discussed during the, the Bihar election campaign, uh, Mr. Arun Jaitley denied that uh, uh, he said that reservation uh, statement by Mr. Bhagwat was not a reason at all uh, in the party's defeat in Bihar and uh, he also said that uh, statements made by other uh, BJP leaders also were not very uh, crucial uh, as far as this defeat is concerned. He said that uh, arithmetic was in favor of uh, Grand Alliance. Uh, he, 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 gave, he gave detail of uh, 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 two, 2014 uh, Lok Sabha elections and he said that at, if at that time also a Grand Alliance would have been there, uh, the result would have been the same. So he, he said that uh, because Grand Alliance had the number on uh, its side, that, that is the main reason BJP tried to, uh, uh, to challenge that uh, that, that equation uh, which was right. formed by Grand Alliance, but they, do, they, they didn't uh, succeed in that. All right, Sham, we leave it over there. The BGP assessing its loss a uh, day after. Of course, ramifications are huge. Uh, they'll have implications in national politics, and Sham will keep you track of that story for us. Now, a day after the Grand Alliance swept the polls in Bihar, BGP leader Shatrugan Sinha met State Chief Minister Nitish Kumar at his residence in Patna. In fact, heaping, pre heaping praises, uh, Sinha said that Nitish Kumar is the tallest leader of Bihar and will be good for the state. Later, he also called on RGD Supremo Lalu Prasad and congratulated him on the grand comeback. Though Sinha turned to the personal meet, it has only led credence to the rumours that he might quit the BJP soon and join the JDU-led government. Speaking to the media, the BJP leader also called for action against res those responsible for the party's rout in Bihar. The BJP, meanwhile, is contemplating action against Shatrugan Sinha for speaking out against senior party leaders publicly. Bihar ki pragati ke maamle mein, sushashan ke maamle mein, नीतीश बाबू का बहुत जबरदस्त योगदान रहा है नीतीश बाबू जो हैं ट्रायड टेस्टेड और सक्सेसफुल चीफ मिनिस्टर रहे हैं मेरी नजरों में सबसे सम्माननीय सबसे आदरणीय हां सबसे ज्यादा बढ़िया व्यक्ति या व्यक्तित्व नीतीश कुमार का बिहार के चुनाव को प्रभावित करने के लिए शत्रुघ्न सिन्हा जी ने उस समय पे बयान दिए और उस पैकेजिंग के वो बयान वो हिस्सा बन गए और पार्टी निश्चित रूप से कार्यवाही करेगी हमारी पार्टी में सब वरिष्ठ लोग बैठे हुए हैं इन सब चीजों को देख रहे हैं Moving on now, addressing the Foundation Day celebrations of the National Legal Services Authority in New Delhi, Prime Minister Narendra Modi stressed the need for timely upgradation of the country's legal system. 
Referring to the Supreme Court retaining the collegian system to appoint judges, Modi said every institution must evolve with times. The Supreme Court had quashed the National Judicial Appointment Commission that would have thrown open the decision-making process. Modi hailed the legal fraternity for extending free legal services to millions of people. He suggested that rendering free legal aid to poor should be a criteria in the selection of judges. The Prime Minister also called for greater legal awareness among the masses. एक ही धर्रे में नहीं रह सकती है समयानुकूल उसमें बदलाव अनिवार्य होता है सोचने के तरीके बदलने की आवश्यकता होती है पुरानी चीज उत्तम ही है इसलिए उसको हम हाथ नहीं लगाएंगे इससे बात बनती नहीं है on to Tamil Nadu now, where a high alert has been issued following a deep depression in the Bay of Bengal. A cyclone is expected to hit the state's coast. Heavy rains have also lashed several parts of the state. Fishermen have been advised not to venture into the sea. There's a cyclone alert for Tamil Nadu as heavy rains lashed several parts of the state, following a deep depression over the Bay of Bengal, which intensified on Saturday. The morning's depression over Southeast Bay has moved west north westwards and now lies 300 kilometers east southeast of Puducherry. It is likely to move in a west north west direction and intensify further. In next 12 hours, we expect it to become a deep depression. Possibly a cyclone storm also later. The Met Department has also predicted no downpour and thunder showers for the state. The entire state has been put on high alert. Meanwhile, most of the schools and colleges in Chennai have been shut in view of the heavy rainfall in the coastal district. Fishermen have been advised not to venture out to sea in the next 24 to 48 hours, as the sea will be rough to very rough. Kolandi in Koriko district in Kerala received highest rainfall during the last 48 hours, recording 13 centimeters. While Papanasam in Tirumanvelli district in Tamil Nadu and Karkala in Udupi district of Karnataka recorded 5 centimeters each of rainfall. Moreover, the current wet spell in southern states under the influence of the active northeast monsoon would continue, as the Met Office had earlier forecasted that the thunder showers in several parts of the southern states, especially in coastal Tamil Nadu, will remain for the next few days. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's now get you some more news and updates from around the country in Nationwide. The government today approved 1,100 crore rupees under the National Disaster Relief Fund for Karnataka and Gujarat, which recently faced droughts and floods. The decision was taken at the high-level meeting of the central, uh, for central assistance to states affected by natural disasters today under the chairmanship of Home Minister Rajnath Singh. The Srinagar Leh National Highway was reopened for traffic today, four days after it closed due to heavy snowfall. Heavy snowfall blocked the Zozila Pass and other places along the route on the 5th of November. The authorities have also cleared snow on the Mughal Road, uh, the alternate road link connecting the Kashmir Valley. India today successfully test-fired its nuclear-capable strategic, strategic ballistic missile Agni-4 from uh, the newly named APJ Abdul Kalam Island of the Odisha coast. The missile is capable of hitting a target at a distance of 4,000 kilometers. It was the fifth trial of the Agni-4 missile. Nestle India today started selling Maggi noodles five months after it was banned. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India banned the sales this June after they found dangerously high levels of lead in it. Nestle is partnered with online marketplace Snapdeal for the rollout. Time for a very quick break. On the other side, we'll talk about uh, the riots that have broken out in Australia's Christmas Island Detention Centre. All that and more on the other side. Rajya Sabha session. News. Views. Reports and analysis you can trust on social media. Subscribe. Follow. Like. Rajya Sabha Television.
welcome back on to our focus story for this evening. Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, National League for Democracy is set to sweep to power in Myanmar with indications of a massive uh, vote swing in the party's favor and the ruling party already conceding defeat. Now, the NLD has won all 12 seats for which the results have been announced so far, needing a two-thirds majority to wrest control. Here's more. The end of military rule in Myanmar, likely in the offing. As early results trickle in, the head of the ruling party concedes defeat, with the parliamentary speaker following suit. Aung San Suu Kyi's opposition National League for Democracy has won all 12 of the seats for which results have been officially announced so far, with expectations of a landslide victory. <laughs> It's some way to go yet. The military already controls 25% of the seats in the nearly 1,100 member house. NLD has to secure two-thirds of the seats in parliament to reach power. Reports say they're on track for just, with indications of a high vote share and a route for the ruling party. <laughs> Under the rules, Myanmar's biggest leader and Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi cannot become president herself. The constitution bars anyone with foreign children from holding the post. However, there are strong indications that she would continue to pull all strings. Myanmar had gone to polls on Sunday, the country's first free national elections in 25 years. Observers say the voting process was smooth with some irregularities. The turnout has been estimated at about 80%. A final vote count can only be expected by Tuesday and the new leader is expected to be named sometime early next year. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And to understand uh, these historic goings on in uh, Myanmar, we're joined by Sanjay Kapoor, editor of Hard News. Welcome, Sanjay. Uh, first of all, uh, it is indeed a historic election uh, as far as Myanmar's transition from military junta to uh, democracy is concerned. And uh, how do you see it shaping up? You know, this is the freest and the fairest election uh, which has happened in Myanmar's history. Um, uh, earlier, you had the government uh, of uh, army-backed uh, political party led by, um, led by uh, the Prime Minister, who has uh, conceded defeat seemingly because there is a great amount of, uh, you can say, support for Aung San Suu Kyi. Although Aung San Suu Kyi per se cannot become the President of the uh, Republic, primarily because they have, they have, she is barred uh, uh, due to the fact that she has uh, foreign children and a foreign spouse. So that is the reason, but surely during the election campaign, doubts are being raised as to how uh, her party, NLD, is going to lead the campaign and how to run the government. So she assured them that she would be above the president. So she would uh, be some kind of mentor who would pull all the strings. She would be the one who would be calling the shots. And that is how she hopes to run the government. Uh, there are many problems where Burma is concerned. Mm. Uh, you have about 800,000 uh, Rohingyas who are not allowed to vote. There is not a single Muslim who has, who has given uh, a ticket to fight by both the NLD and the ruling party. And that way, you know, it's an it's a election which kind of excludes a, a large mass of people. Right. Aung San Suu Kyi has been silent on the suffering or the genocide that is taking place. Yeah, she's come under a lot of criticism. It's not the same Aung San Suu Kyi as the world remembers from the Nobel Prize. This is a different political personality uh, now that she is cultivated. And uh, she's often been uh, the, 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 at the receiving end of a lot of criticism as well. Yeah, she drew a lot of criticism because, uh, you know, the, you had reports coming out of uh, what was happening in the Rakhine province uh, with a lot of Rohingyas being beaten, uh, their houses being burnt, many of them were forced to, uh, you know, leave the land, become refugees, and the Rohingya crisis even, you know, uh, touched all us in, in India also. You got refugees not far away from Delhi, in Jammu, and many other places. So uh, you had the Burmese leadership, which was very silent on that. In a trip uh, to Rakhine State, uh, she was asked uh, Aung San Suu Kyi about what is uh, her view on the, what they call the Bengali Muslim. And she kept quiet and she said that, you know, everything that she would say would be distorted. Because now Aung San Suu Kyi is a political personality. She knows exactly 
how her words are going to impact voting. So she did not want to rub the majority community on the wrong side. And on the other side, you have the ruling party, which was using American-style lobbying. They were you know, working very hard to polarize the society, something that we have seen here in other, other democracies, how they actually try to bind communities in a group right. so that they can benefit from that. So in a certain way, uh, it's going to be a huge challenge for NLD mm -hmm. because she has to also limit the influence of the army. Okay. The army has about 25% vote in the, in the house. And uh, every time, you know, there's an attempt to change, they are the ones who preserve uh, a certain power and influence of the army, which is called Tatmadaw. And they are the ones who have actually transited into democracy and they don't want any kind of dilution. Mm. So big, big challenge for Aung San Suu Kyi. So, if she's able to get the support of more than 80%, then she can attempt to bring about political reforms. There was an attempt to do it in June earlier, and it got defeated primarily because, you know, that she could not get or, uh, you know, they, they, they could not muster more than 70% of the votes. They lost by about right. 100 votes. So I'm sure very interesting times, and India would be watching these developments very closely mm. because you have the issue of Rohingyas. India would be keen that the refugees go back. They would work very closely with Aung San Suu Kyi, who's got old ties with India. She studied in Delhi's uh, uh, Lady Sri Ram right. College. She's a, a lady who understands India very well. She has interacted with the Prime Minister, whom uh, recently when he went to Yangon. Hmm. So yeah. I'm sure there is a lot to look forward to in these elections, which I think are quite path-breaking. All right, uh, indeed uh, they are. And we'll keep a close eye on these elections. Not many new channels are doing that for now. But Sanjay, thank you very much for coming in and helping us understand the election process in Myanmar a little better and the implications of that as well. Now, let's take a look at other international news now and Global Buzz. A disturbance broke out today at Australia's Christmas Island Detention Center in Nits fires amid widespread unrest prompted by the death of an Iranian detainee. Fences were also torn down, forcing guards to abandon their post. Christmas Island Center holds asylum seekers from war torn regions in the Middle East and Asia. Interior ministers of the European Union member states will meet in Brussels today to discuss the ongoing migrant crisis. This comes as an attempt to formulate a long term policy to handle the current refugee crisis. Today's meeting will be followed by a two day summit in Malta between European and American and African leaders. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived in Washington on Sunday ahead of talks with U.S. President Barack Obama. The two heads will meet at the White House for the first time today since the signing of the Iran nuclear deal. Netanyahu hopes the talks will outline a 10-year military aid package for his country. Time now for some sports and in a major cricketing development today, the Board of Control for Cricket in India has removed N. Srinivasan as ICC chairman after it decided to recall him and nominate its recently elected president Shashank Manohar as the chief of the world body. The decision to remove Srinivasan was taken at the BCCI's 86th AGM in Mumbai. The tenure of Srinivasan who took over June last year was to end next year in the same month. The remainder of the term will now be completed by Shashank Manohar as it is India's turn to hold the top position. In case Manohar cannot attend the meetings, I, uh, Sharad Pawar will be India's representative. Well, that's it from us. Goodbye.